Like most aircraft kits, uh, work begins with the assembly of the cockpit area. Uh, for this kit, it involves us clipping out the uh, floor plate and uh, side structure details. Parts now free, we can start by removing the uh, original seat mounting holes so that we can now attach our photo etched parts. We then use an X Acto knife to further clean the area before we begin sanding it. Assist in removing material, the flat edge of the knife is used to strip away the excess material. Once done, sanding begins on the parts. Periodically through this process, we check to see how far sanding has gone, and where necessary, we either clip the parts again, or we use the X-Acto knife to further strip away material. Sanding complete, we can now begin to attach our photo etch parts. To begin removing the photo etch, we use the cardboard backing that's provided with the photo etch set so as to allow for an easier time cutting these parts off their trees. With the photo etch parts removed, we clean up the resulting burrs that remain on the parts. In this case, using an X-Acto knife to very carefully remove these nubs and then sanding them flush with the part.
after an initial test fit, you can then proceed with attaching the photo edge to the part. To attach the part, we're going to be using CA glue, as this is ultimately the easiest to work with and will allow us to get it on without too much difficulty. In this case, we're going to also not be applying the glue directly to the part from the bottle. We'll instead use a needle as an intermediary with which to spread the glue over the part and then attach the photo etch to the part that way. This helps ensure we do not apply excess glue to the part and will help us from having to do excessive cleanup later. In places where insufficient glue was applied, additional glue is then applied using our nail. Once alignment has been assured, we then repeat the process again on the opposite side for the second seat rail. The seat rails attached, we can now turn our attention to assembling the seat mounts. Because of the brittle nature of these photo etch parts, extra care is given and we instead of cleaning the parts up prior to bending them to shape, we'll instead bend them to shape first, glue them together and we'll then proceed with cleanup. This ensures that the part has additional substance with which to be, allow us to clean it up. To help ensure that we get the photo etch glued together, we use a pair of tweezers to help fold and align the parts. Uh, this is mostly due to the fact that super glue very easily sticks to your fingers.
the glue now dry, we can start to bend the parts into their correct shape. On this mounting bracket, we happen to miss the connecting gate for the photo etch. As such, this required us to very quickly remove and clean up the part. With this last mounting bracket bent to shape, we can now proceed with connecting these mounts to the cockpit floor. In this case, we will also be applying glue directly to the part since they will not be readily seen once the cockpit is assembled. Additionally, because of the narrow nature of where they are being mounted, the excess glue is going to be necessary to help facilitate proper uh, mounting. During the process of attaching the seat mounting backs, we discovered that part of the original uh, mounts had remained, so we very quickly shift to mounting the part in the back and we'll proceed with removing the excess plastic so that we can then proceed and attach the seat mount. With the area now cleaned up, we can finally attach the front seat mount. With that completed, we can now proceed with attaching the control yokes. This is something we have to do prior to attaching the seats, given how the part was designed to fit under the seats. Obviously, can't put it in uh, after that those seat parts go in.
For gluing the parts, I go with uh, thin cement from Tamiya. I find this gives us the best bond and we'll ensure we don't have to do too much cleanup. To help us get the parts attached and aligned properly, uh, we'll use a set of tweezers to get the parts mounting pegs into their respective holes. With the cockpit for now assembled to the point where we need to turn our attention elsewhere, we start work on the cockpit side support areas. This includes cleaning off the various pegs and their respective mounting gates. Another thing we'll need to do is scrape off the molded on detailing so that we can replace it with the photo etch uh, detail sets. With the surface sanded smooth, we can now move on to the opposite side to begin cleanup work there. Now one of the things we will need to do on this particular part is remove the mounting bracket for the kit's provided map case. This will be ultimately replaced with a photo etched one, however this mounting bracket will ultimately be in the way. As such it has to be removed and the area cleaned up. With that bracket removed, we can now proceed with attaching the upper section of the seat mounting brackets. We held off doing this because we wanted to ensure that the brackets themselves had sufficient time to set up and now we can finally go ahead and attach it. For the, this particular part, we're going to be using a piano wire that we've cut to the appropriate size. Both of those attached, we can now move on to assembling the seats themselves. In an attempt to help us shape the photo edge seats, the kit seats are cut out and we attempt to use them as a guide for getting the correct bend angle for the photo edge. Fortunately, this turns out to be more difficult as we do in the process, it's managed to accidentally break off the bottom of the seat.
After bending the sides of the seat to the correct position, we use the bottom part of the photo edge seat, which is broken off, as a guide to help us bend and shape the rest of the seat to the correct curvature. Reattach the seat bottom to the rest of the seat. Decide to go with uh, soldering it back on. This offers the advantage of giving a quick setting solution while presenting new challenges and the necessary need to clean up the resulting excess solder. This process is again repeated with the second seat. With soldering complete, you now begin the task of cleaning up the soldered points, mainly through sanding. With cleanup on the seats now complete, we can now continue with adding the last bit of photo edge detailing to them.
the last bit of photo etched finally attached, we now begin prepping the parts for the first coat of primer so as to see any areas that we may need to fix and clean up. With the first coat of primer on, we can now see areas that need to be cleaned up, which we proceed to do using the Acto knife. Once that's done, we also then proceed to give it good sanding, smooth out any areas we may have missed previously. Once this is done, parts are reprimed and the first coat of paint is applied. Now since we are trying to match the paint to photo etch parts, we do unfortunately need to sometimes change color. In this case, the initial color we went with ended up being much too dark in comparison to the photo etched. So after changing color, we are able to again move forward. For the rudder pedals, we needed to remove the plastic parts that came with the kit. This involved simply clipping the parts at the base of the rudder pedal and then cleaning that up. This left us with just the attachment points for the rudder pedals to the rest of the cockpit, which are then painted the appropriate color. Because of the small size of these rudder pedals, instead of airbrushing them, we will instead just hand paint them so as to save time and help ensure we don't lose these parts. With painting completed, we can now attach the photo etch parts to the cockpit sidewall. This will be done in several steps due to the multi-part nature of these photo etch parts.
While waiting for the base parts to set up, we go ahead and start working on attaching the photo etch parts to the rudder pedals. With the base parts now fully cured, we can proceed with attaching the throttle assemblies. The throttle is now complete, we proceed with attaching the mixture control levers.
with both mixture controls now attached, we can proceed with attaching the entire assembly to the cockpit sidewalls. With the bows now attached, we can proceed with getting some of the smaller, more delicate detail parts off the runner, uh, namely some of the various levers. For these, we're masking underneath them so as to help ensure that they do not go flying off to be lost forever. With the last lever placed, we have now finished this first sidewall. We can now begin work on the replacement photo etch map case. To help us bend the map case sides to the proper angles, we'll be using a photo etch bending tool.
With the app case now fully folded, we can go ahead and attach it to the sidewall. With that done, we can now start working on some of the smaller or much more delicate photo edge parts and building up some of the additional assemblies for the sidewall. Here we begin the delicate task of attaching the photo edge part to a bit of wire. This is critical because we will eventually be attaching an additional segment to this similar to this one. As such, getting this part properly seated and aligned is of the utmost importance.
adding the second bracket to this part is ultimately going to be one of the most challenging things we do on this kit. This is mainly due to the fact that we need to get them both aligned properly and given the small size this is quite difficult. After folding together the lower section on the control lever, we attach it to the parts we earlier constructed. Fortunately, sometimes these parts are non-cooperative and we'll sometimes have to try several times to get the parts attached. Now comes the task of attaching the two rods together. For this we use a pair of um, clothespins to help hold the parts together as we align them and get them together. Furthermore these will also help ensure that they stay aligned after we attach them.
With the leader assembly completed, we now put together the base upon which they will ultimately rest and attach it to the side wall. While waiting for other parts to dry, we go ahead and attach the rudder pedals to the side walls. We then proceed to begin attaching the levers to their bases. To do this, we first apply a bit of CA glue to the base before proceeding with attaching the levers onto them. A little bit of care is used to get these attached as they ultimately are slightly on the stubborn side.
Next step is to begin work on prepping and attaching the seat belts to the seats. Because the seat belts are comprised of multiple parts, we first shape the seat belts using the seat itself before then attaching the additional parts off the seat. After attaching and allowing time for the parts to dry, you then proceed with attaching the seat belt to the seat itself.
This process is then repeated for the second belt. With both seats now finished, we proceed to attach the rudder pedals to the opposite sidewall. We next proceed to add a little additional detail to the troll sticks by painting the upper part black. With this complete, we now give the entire cockpit assembly a gloss coat so that we can then proceed with adding some weathering detail. While we are not going to do a full dark weathering for this particular project, we do add a little bit of dust and sand color to the areas where one would expect these things to accumulate in the cockpit, in particular on the floorboard and around the seat and the seat edges.
With the weathering done, a flat coat is sprayed over the entirety of the cockpit and we'll then proceed with attaching the seats to the cockpit itself. With the seats now attached, we proceed with putting the first of the side walls onto the cockpit bottom. Despite one of the seats falling out, we continue with the task of attaching the side walls to the cockpit bottom. When we finish this, we'll go back and reattach the other seat.
With the majority of the cockpit now completed, we can begin work on the fire extinguisher part. This part mainly involves the scraping of the molded on details so that we can replace it with photo etched. After a quick coat of red paint to distinguish it as a fire extinguisher, we then proceed to paint on a small silver detail at the top. The next step is to cut out and shape the mounting bracket for the fire extinguisher.
common problem you'll sometimes face is the possibility of dropping a part. Uh, in most cases, this can potentially mean the end of a project, as once the part has fallen, it can be very difficult to find, but in some cases, you do luck out and find it fairly quickly. After a little work, we had the fire extinguisher finally completed. We can now begin work getting the fuselage sides clipped out and cleaned up.
for the rigging that we'll add later on, we drill mounting holes into the side of the fuselage at this stage. After this, we clip out the upper portion of the fuselage and clean it up as well. After a little test fitting, we then continue onward. The next step is to begin construction of the instrument panels. To do this, I first took and cleaned off the kit supplied instrument panels with the idea of using them as a base. Next thing we do is begin scraping off and sanding down the molded on details of the instrument panel. This is done in several phases, slowly wearing it down. At this time we also clip off the molded on attachment points, which later turns out to be a mistake.
With the instrument panel sanded down, we now cut out the supplied template for the holes we need to drill for the instrument gauges. Seeing that the template will not remain attached to the part on its own, our first attempt is to try and use some scotch tape to hold it in place so that we can drill the holes. After drilling out the holes, we quickly see that this plan did not work. The template ended up shifting under us as we were drilling out. For our next attempt, we use Micro Crystal Clear as it has a property similar to that of white glue. Since the kit's part was destroyed on in our initial attempt, we'll need to craft a replacement. To do this, we use plastic sheet, which we cut to the proper size and ultimately thickness by placing several sheets together. While we're waiting for our assembly to dry, we proceed with drawing out the holes on the initial instrument that we glued the template to. To ensure that the template doesn't move on the part we made, we used super glue to attach it prior to beginning the process of trimming away the excess and shaping the part. To ensure that the part stays together, apply additional glue to the areas that we cut. This will help ensure that if any glue when we initially glued it did not seep fully through the various layers, we'll do so now.
Once we finish sanding the part to shape, we drill out the holes for the gauges. With the drilling completed on both instrument panels, we can now prep them for a coat of black paint. With the parts now painted, we begin clipping out the photo edge parts that will serve as the back of the instrument panels. the backs attached, we then continue on to attach the front faces to the instrument panel. Last thing we'll need to do to the instrument panels is attach these selector levers to the front.
panels now complete, we can then attach them into the upper section of the fuselage. Here you will see why cutting off the other parts did prove to be a bit of a hassle as it did make attaching them to this section a lot more difficult. Once the panels are in place, we then proceed to attach the fire extinguisher to the sidewall. With that attached, we have finished the cockpit.